yippee ki motherfuckers. It is time for another Die Hard on a Blank. Uh, so we've been watching these WWE movies for a while, and thankfully we are now one away from being done. Uh, because this started out being super fun. Yeah, it did. And has really devolved into just... I mean, like, it started out being super fun, except, like, the second movie, or the yeah. third movie was See No Evil, so... Yeah, that's true. There's there's just a handful of them that are really bad, and the problem is, is that the, the last handful, the last couple, like, five or six that we've watched, there's maybe been one or two that I kind of enjoyed. Like, even See No Evil 2... I enjoyed for how badly made it was. Yeah. Like switching yeah, like that. like they switch the eye, they remind you they switched the eye, yeah. and then they switch the eye back halfway through the movie. Stuff like that is fucking laughable and fun. Mm-hmm. The last two or three haven't been laughable. See, I feel like I liked one of them, but I can't remember which one. Yeah. And that's a problem. <laughs> because they're yeah. all so forgettable. They really are. Mm-hmm. Well, and they're all boilerplate. They're all just Yeah standard like like this one especially was very much like okay and now we're gonna do some shooting pew, 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 pew. it was like an explosion ma- explosion it was like a mad libs done by a boring person wrote this movie yes yeah and the, the, then the, the whole thing was you know okay boring action movie says what boring action movie like even the fight scenes which mm-hmm. this is where a movie with a wrestler should shine mm-hmm. this is a professional stuntman that's what pro wrestling is they are pro they are pro stuntmen who sometimes talk. Uh, this is a professional stuntman who does fight, fight choreography for a living, usually making it up himself on the fly. Yeah. And they suck. The fights in this are awful. Uh, I, you know what I want? They should do a WWE movie where they don't choreograph the fight scenes. They let the, I think they should let the wrestler do it. Yeah. They or let, let the wrestler choreograph it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be fucking great. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that bummed me out too, and this hey, is the you could save time, money. You could. You, these wrestlers aren't smart enough to know that they should be getting paid extra. <laughs> to, you know, they wrestle. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm coming at you, wrestlers. The other problem that I had with this, and this happened again with Twelve Rounds Three, also, it's like, okay, we have a franchise, so we're going to make sequels. Yeah. But the sequels have nothing to do. With, at least this one referenced it quickly. Did it? One, yes, it did. Oh, I missed that. What do you say? So at one point, uh, the the Mexican guy who's running the whole operation, somebody uh, Stephen Michael Quezada, sure. Uh, somebody comes up to him and he's like, "This is great. Where'd you get the idea to do this?" And he's like, "Did you see that thing a couple of years ago where they had a bunch of guys out in the in, in the jungle and they were all fighting for their freedom?" He goes, mm-hmm. "Like I remember that. They lost a lot of money, didn't they?" That's right, they did. <laughs> God, and it's referenced that way, and it's like it's like, oh, that seems like a bad idea. Oh, but I liked the idea of it, and I just wanted to steal it and do it for this. What? Well, and he also like stresses throughout the movie, like this was my idea. <laughs> but it's like, dude, it wasn't. No, it was probably your buddy. I so his buddy. He interrupts his buddy at the beginning. Yeah, while he's giving his speech. His buddy, who's played by Wes Studi, who's an amazing actor. There was some like kind of, like crazy like. Like, Eric Roberts would show up. I'd be like, the fuck is Eric Roberts? Well, Eric Roberts was the second name as we started watching the movie. He was the second name to show up in the credits. And I was like, what the fuck? Wasn't Eric Roberts in another one of these? Yes, he was. I can't remember which one. Didn't we make fun of him then that they probably paid him in cocaine? Yes. Okay, never mind. I totally understand why Eric Roberts Eric Roberts gets paid in shrooms and cocaine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's... So, yeah. Like, I don't know if you ever watched Entourage, but which I think I mentioned this Mm -hmm. on the the episode. When when you want the best shrooms, you go to Eric Roberts. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, yeah. Uh, no, so Eric Roberts is in this, and again, kicks ass, because he's Eric so fucking like, Roberts. But what a bizarre character. Yeah. Like, he's he's always a one step behind his son, who he's just following. Yeah. No, uh, Randy Orton in this... First off, I think we now know definitively, um, Randy Orton's not a good actor. He had a good line at the end, when he killed the, the main bad guy, the Hispanic dude. Yeah. And he goes like... He was like, I had some regrets about killing the other guy. And then he, like, stabs him in the throat. And he's like, I won't with you. Yeah. That was cool. Uh, okay. I dug that. That's, see, but that's the problem, though. That might be the most clever line in the whole movie. <laughs> that, and that it's, is true. it's just okay. Yeah. Like, it's not even up to the point of where Vendetta's, like, kiss-off lines were. Mm-hmm. Um, although Vendetta's kiss-off lines were like, why do you even have a kiss-off line? Yeah. That seems out of place. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's an it's a bad action movie, so we all have to have kiss off lines. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we should we should preface this by we haven't even said the name of the movie. We watched Condemned Two. Uh, so Condemned One was with Stone Cold Steve Austin. 
where uh, it's basically Hungy Games, but with grown-ups, and they're all uh, ex-cons, and they put them all on an island, mm -hmm. and whoever doesn't, whoever lives gets freedom, was the idea. Yeah. Uh, this one, they're not ex-cons, it's a team of uh, bounty hunters, mm -hmm. uh, and they are all pointed at their leader. All of them are, are blackmailed into killing their leader, mm -hmm. uh, and then go who's ahead... Randy and, Orton. Who's Randy Orton. Uh, and all of his buddies have specialties. Yeah. And we're told all of them at the beginning, which I thought was... And like a dumb, like, their face goes up and you and get you a close-up of their specialty. face and like, holographic, like, yeah. Victor Laszlo. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> sniper. Yeah. Like, blah, blah, Cooper, exp uh, demolitions expert. Mm -hmm. And this guy, hand-to-hand. -hand. Uh, yeah, which... I think I remembered the sniper, and I remembered the demolitions guy. The other two guys I didn't remember at all. I actually, so when he kills the sniper, he gives like a sad look to him that I liked. I thought Randy Orton did a good job there. Like, some of his acting that is stood okay. Out to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A handful of them of the lines are done well. The stuff with his dad, I mean, none of it's bad. And that's the problem with this movie. It's never bad, yeah. but it's also never good. Yeah, it's just, it's middling. It's a middling, like, this is like a C-minus of a movie. Um, and the problem is, passing. It, it's like, well, like, here's the thing, it's technically proficiently made. Yes. Um, the, the, all the shots look pretty good. By the way, yeah. I was looking up the trivia, this movie was made with a non-union crew. Wow. Yeah. Even more impressive than that it doesn't look like a huge piece of shit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so... That being said, like, the, the canyon area they fight in... Yeah. ...looked like a... They were just, like, rented out an airsoft place and were like, all right, guys, let's shoot an action movie here. You know? Pretty much, yeah. Uh, which, at one point, I really thought this was going to be a Die Hard movie. Um, mm -hmm. Like, we were three quarters of, of the way through, and I was like, yeah, it's mostly just been him. His mm -hmm. dad has kind of helped, but not really. Well, there's also the and other then, guy. And then he has the buddy that comes and helps him. Uh, but he also doesn't totally help. He's just kind of mm -hmm. there for the ride. And I was like, holy shit, this might be a fucking Die Hard movie. And then they have the final scene at the end where there's a raid. And there's like four of them against the yeah. team. And I'm like, and you fucking ruined it. God damn it. Which sucks. We would have had like three in a row that were Die Hard movies. Yeah. Which is insane. Cause, mm -hmm. And we're counting on Marine 5 being a Die Hard movie. I don't think it will be. It looks like a big team movie. Really? Is it well, it five has it's like got like six wrestlers, wrestlers in it. Yeah, I think it's going to be like See, I'm hoping that means The Miz against like five wrestlers. Oh, shit. That'd be awesome. Yeah. That'd be awesome. That's what I'm hoping, is that they're all bad guys. I'm hoping they so. weren't like, let's do Expendables with wrestlers. That, which is Expendables 3. I gotta say, I fucking love that idea. <laughs> um, I yeah. mean, yeah, I could I Do could Expendables get 4, and it's all pro, like in an all pro wrestler movie. Here's the thing, though. I don't... <coughs> pardon me. Mm -hmm. I don't want this movie to be made with the ideas and the storytelling techniques of our modern times. Mm -hmm. But I do like our wrestlers. I want to take our wrestlers. We take John Cena. We take The Miz. You know, we take all the classics. Yeah. The classics. And we put them back in the 80s. And oh, we, where it's old school wrestling time. Old school wrestling time. And also, like, people were just making fucking batshit movies. Like Gremlins, yeah. you know? I, here's what we I would... Let those, I, yeah. We let those coke monsters make the WWE movie. Here's what I think would be really cool. I want to see a movie about 80s wrestlers mm -hmm. starring today's wrestlers. Oh, so they play... So they all play famous movies. Fam well, yeah, fathers or cousins. The Rock, we can have or, The Rock play his father the Rock, again. Which, that happened on the 70s uh -huh. show, yeah. Um, yeah, where he says, my son's going to be the most electrifying man. And so, they were like, okay, whatever. Yeah, uh, I thought that was funny. Um, but no, yeah, I think it would be cool to have, you know, and you could have somebody like The Miz play the Macho Man and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and John Cena play Hulk Hogan. and Oh, absolutely. That would be fun absolutely. as hell. I think that would be really cool. And do a movie about, I don't know, one of the big things from back then. Like, oh, like the build-up to the steroid angle. Mm -hmm. Like the rise of the WWF and the time the WWF almost died. Yeah. Which would be the steroid thing. Um, so, yeah, you'd, you'd have the rise of, like, you know, Vince buying the company from his dad. Uh, and Vince could be played by Shane, which who's his son. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then you could... And Vince Sr. can be played by... Vince Jr. Uh, yeah, so Vince Vince is, is Vince, Vince, Vince Jr. Jr. Yeah, so yeah, it's his son Vince the Third. No, his son is Shane. Oh yeah, you just said that. I'm sorry. Yeah, does actually, he, does first, he have a Vince the Third? The first WWE movie, which is technically actually No Holds Barred, mm -hmm. uh, which we have not done and probably will not do, uh, because it is, although it is amazing, 
Uh, they just did it on How Did This Get Made. Oh, did they? Because it's, it's... Oh, it's fucking amazing. Okay. Um, yeah. Like, at one point, uh, Hulk grabs a guy. Hulk Hogan is the star of the movie. Yeah. Um, and Tiny Lister from Friday and all these other movies is yeah. the bad guy. Uh, and they actually brought him in as a wrestler during that year. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, he can't wrestle. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, but at one point, Hulk Hogan grabs one of the, you know, the the henchmen mm-hmm. and grabs him. And the guy goes, Ugh! And Hogan goes, What's that smell? And he goes, Dookie. <laughs> and he goes, Dookie. And he's like, <laughs> God. He's like, and then Hogan throws him across a room because Hogan has super strength. Yeah, of course. Um, I yeah. mean, he does. I mean, the most famous scene in the movie is when he pops through the top of a limo. Um, he's inside of a limo and they're like, we got him. He's trapped in the limo. Mm-hmm. And he goes, hurrah, and actually explodes through the top of a limo and like jumps on top of it. All in one move. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's amazingly cool. He also invented a, um, a specific like finger motion for the movie. Uh, a version of hang loose, which is the, the pinky and the thumb outstretched. That is my hand gesture of choice. So yeah, it's I hang loose. Crazy. But he added the index finger, but cocked as if you were firing a gun. So now so now it's it's almost like doing the finger guns, except press the, the finger trigger, trigger yes. finger. And this was, so his finger character... Gun, that's devil horns. Okay, well yeah, it's, it's devil horns with the pinky extended. Or, with the thumb extended. No, with the, with the pointer finger, like, closed up. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so yeah, so, so this was his, his movement and they tried to like make it happen with this and he played a character named, uh, Rip, uh, Rip Riley or some shit like that Mm -hmm. and he wore blue. He's basically himself. Yeah. He dresses exactly like him except instead of being yellow and red, he's blue and white. And their bad guy in the movie is basically Vince. I mean this. Yeah. Again, wrestlers aren't smart enough to. No, Vince helped write this movie. Actually, no, excuse me. The bad guy in the movie was Ted Turner. Um, yeah. Was it actually Ted Turner? No. Oh, okay. Uh, but the bad guy in the movie was a billionaire who owned a large cable network oh, okay. and was trying to buy the wrestlers mm-hmm. from a uh, a small little wrestling company that was just trying to entertain the fans. God. It's, and you're like, holy shit. The funny thing is, that actually ended up happening about nine years later. <laughs> uh, Ted Turner went and bought Hulk Hogan. Uh, and brought him to WCW, and there was a big parade at Disney World. So, yeah. I hope you made him watch No Holds Barred with him. I, <laughs> that would have been funny. That's a power move. Yeah. You watch uh, it with Ted, you're not allowed to laugh. No. You're not allowed to have fun. No. Ted's just smoking a cigar, watching Ted you. Ted stares at you, smokes the cigar, and gently rubs his cock. Mm-hmm. Like, not, He doesn't take it out. This isn't sick. No. Okay? This is just a power move. He's just yeah. going to gently rub over the pants. He's not assaulting. No. It's just gonna. It's it's creepy. It's it's Aziz Ansari. It's creepy without being criminal. Yeah. So yeah. Just I don't there. know if you've heard that one. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's and that was he was creepy, but not criminal. Yeah. So yeah, like he deserves to not get called back. Um, <laughs> exactly. And and, I, and he deserved the text message where she called him an asshole. Yeah. Uh, that seems fine. Uh, I don't think we should call him an assaulter or yeah. bring him up on charges. I think there's, and it's it's nice too that there's actually like women now that are standing up for. Hold on. Like, when you bring up that story, you cheapen the... The real... The real victims. Yeah. And that like, this lady was raped. This lady was held down and groped. Mm-hmm. These ladies need our attention and they need to be listened to and heard Matt to. Matt Lauer had a button on his desk. Yeah. <laughs> you had a bad date with a guy who was a little pushy. Yeah. And I'm sorry. That sucks. Uh, uh, guys do that and they're assholes. Uh, you also should have left. I don't... I don't know. It doesn't seem like he was stopping you. Mm-hmm. It seems more like he was just... While you're there, he's going to be on you. That so. being said... I wouldn't be surprised if Aziz had a Matt Lauer style button somewhere in his swanky apartment. No, like clue me in this button that Matt Lauer. Do I haven't not heard know about, about this. this. I haven't heard about this. Oh my god! I man. knew that Matt Lauer was assaulting people who worked on the show. He was having an affair with a lady who was one of the assistants there. He would. Um, he would get them into his office. Yeah. And he'd have a button on his desk that would lock the door behind them. Oh holy shit! <laughs> like a fucking James Bond villain. God damn. Matt Lauer is sexually assaulting on a whole other level. <laughs> Seriously. He's fucking... He's the Michael Phelps of rape. Serious. Yeah. Like, there's a bunch of, like, rapists that are like, then what'd you do, Mr. Lauer? And he goes, well, then I put a button on my desk that locked the door. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. And they're all, like, writing notes and shit. Like, teaching classes on how best to molest. Who? <laughs> so. 
Who's, who was like, yeah, Mr. Lauer, we'll give you a button to lock your door. Here's what I want, guys. I want to hit a button on my desk, and I want the door to lock, and no one can get out. And he's like... So that sounds fine. That's, yeah, like, yeah, that doesn't sound nefarious. Nope. Okay. That well, sounds uh, totally fine. We'll I can't imagine that ever being tomorrow. used for anything terrible. Mm-hmm. Totally good. How do you even set that up? Is I, it like yeah. a wireless button? Are there wires going from his desk? There's got to be a wire. There's got to be a wire. There's got to right? be a wire. Gosh, that's terrible. Here's the question. I don't. I don't know. Did the door? Did the button also close the door? Because then it's a whole extra level of creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's in my mind. I'm picturing the Ron Swanson door from Parks and Rec. Exactly. Although his was just to keep people out and not necessarily to lock people in. When Ron Swanson does it, it's kitschy. It's cute. When Matt well, Lauer and it's does to exclude it, exclude himself from yes. people. Yeah. Yes. And when when Ron Swanson does it, nobody's in there. Exactly. When Matt Lauer does it. It's not. Yeah. You know what sucks? I liked Matt Lauer. I never, like, liked him. He was okay. I played him in my Spanish class one time. We had to do a weather report in Spanish. And so me and my buddy played Matt uh, Matt Lauer and Al Roker. And we gave the weather in Spanish. Wait, you were Lauer? I was Lauer, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) what, What does your friend look like? Whiter than me. Okay. It was, and I'm assuming skinnier too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, how dare you assume? Like I, that's what I'm saying. Like I'm like of the white guys I know. You have a little darker complexion. You have a little mm-hmm. more olive toned. I'm questionably ethnic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you could be. Like if you told me you were Mexican, I'd probably buy it. Hey, Amen. So yeah. Hey, hey man. Do you like my lauer? <laughs> uh, Viva USA today. <laughs> 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 Good morning, America. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> That's some straight up Cheech Marin shit right there. I'm the bad guy from Condemned too. <laughs> I fucking love that guy. The bad guy from this movie is, uh, he plays Gomez on Breaking Bad for all the, all the listeners out there. Okay, it. yeah. Ben here hasn't. I haven't seen Breaking Bad. Um, if you don't know. I, I My problem with this guy was I hated every time he had lines between like his underlings. Mm-hmm. They all sounded like, it was exposition written poorly. Every, um, I mean, everything... <laughs> Every yeah, all the of scene his where he were. holds the gun to the guy's head and is like, "My predecessor made everything based on respect. I knew it based on fear. Are you afraid of me?" He didn't even act that well. It was yeah. it was more monotone than that. Oh, it was bad. Which is the problem. And the, the guy's like, "Yeah, I'm afraid." And then he like doesn't shoot him. I don't know. Ugh. It's dumb. Also, that's I don't. Just, it was so. It's is so, he stupid? Why would you ever think that's an effective management tactic? It's so. Like it, everything that would happen was like, all right, who gives a shit? Yeah, like it all just nothing mattered. Like they killed that sheriff lady. The sniper kills the sheriff lady, which, holy shit, whatever gun he was using, ripped a fucking hole in the middle of that poor woman. It was probably like a fifty cal. Yeah, and then later on, clips Randy Orton, and uh, doesn't do much. No, it doesn't do much. Which it really Excuse apparently me. this thing like comes through the air like a cannonball, mm-hmm. uh, and barely just grazed Randy Orton because. Yeah, again, she had a hole blown through her, and he had... It's because women are tiny and men can take gunshots. God damn it. Uh, it yeah. It sexist. Uh, it was... It's sexist and, like, so much who cares. There was a part in this movie where there's, like, a whole bunch of gratuitous shots of, like, women in, like, short shorts and, like, yeah. crop tops. And it's, I was like, I mean, I don't want to be rude, but... You could have got more attractive women for this part. Yes! Right? And you could have been more gratuitous, and you could have... Like, even at that, they fail. Like, mm-hmm. if you're going to be, like, gross, macho, well, let's show off these hot bitches. You need more. Then get one, get hot bitches, and two, show them off. Like, you got decent-looking women. They're standing by a car. Why are they not washing it? Th- yeah. You, you got decent-looking women, and they were fairly well-clothed, and they're standing there. And, and two, it's like, what the fuck? Two women isn't enough. Make a commitment, make a choice, and go mm-hmm. for it. Be like if you're going for a Fast and Furious vibe, mm-hmm. fucking get there. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's two, two women hanging out, two women there. They're just hanging out. Yeah, you get a group. They're here to do something. Exactly. And we don't know what they're gonna do, and it's the mystery. The mystery is the erotic. And if part. and if it's there just to like tease us all, like oh hot bitches, hey. That, I mean that's terrible. But also, if you're gonna do it, at least do it. Yeah. Don't do it half ass. Now you've lost your points for doing it. Uh, you've lost whatever, like, respect points you had. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, two, you lose more respect for doing it poorly. So, yeah. You, you know who could have made the scene better? Hmm. Harvey Weinstein. 
He could have gotten in there. He, he really would have. He would have produced the hell out of this. I think team. we need better looking girls, and I think I think they need to have bigger bosoms. <laughs> so, God, this this where's is the, the women? <laughs> See, mine is based on the Kevin Smith impression of him mm-hmm. that I've heard him do. Where he's like, is it like the Matrix? I get the Matrix. I don't get whatever you're talking about. I don't. I don't know what this is. God. <laughs> Why can't it be more like the Matrix? Did you see the Matrix? I made the Matrix. I don't know if you know. <laughs> and he just keeps bringing that shit up. Apparently, like twenty years later, he was still like, they'd be like, Harvey, we have this idea for a movie. It's about a little boy who flies. Oh, like in the Matrix. <laughs> like... I mean, I won't fault a man for really liking a movie. Yeah. Yeah. You know. But for a producer like locking in on one, to be fair. Great movie he made. He Hey, he knows what he likes. And apparently it works. Because he's making good movies. Or he was. Yeah. yeah. That's the other bummer of it all. He actually made like some amazing, amazing movies. Mm-hmm. But now because of this tainted thing, we have to go back and check all of them and be like, Nope, see, right there, that's where he was a dick. And then now that movie is tainted forever. Fuck, uh, what's he called? Uh, Frida. Frida? That was, yeah. That's what uh, which that was... apparently he didn't want to make. Uh, Selma Hayek has now told the story that it's like yeah. she tried to get that made for 10 years and every time he was like no let's not do that one mm-hmm. she's like please 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 and then finally had to finance most of it herself yeah uh, yeah god uh, but Goodwill Hunting like I mean I won't give up on Goodwill Hunting yet because of Robin Williams performance exactly yeah uh, well and really everybody uh, Casey yeah. Affleck's fucking great Ben Affleck's fucking great Matt Damon of course is always great Wait, it's, is Casey Affleck in that movie? Yes, he is. He plays Ben Affleck's little brother. No, no, no. Oh. Play, he plays a friend. That's right. He's the friend who jerks off with the baseball glove. Mm-hmm. And they're like, they're like, what do you use the glove for? And he's like, I use it for cleanup. What? <laughs> it's like, and they're like, oh, it's disgusting. Use a goddamn towel. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you? And he's like, what? I like it. It feels smooth on my skin. <laughs> it's like, Good uh, Lord. Yeah. It's plus, he apparently he was going over to his friend's house. Going to a different room that had a TV in it, and wet, which the level of comfort you have to feel to, to do that, yeah, is amazing. Like I, w- I've never been like at somebody else's house and been like, you yeah, know, I think I'm just gonna go find an empty room and, and whack one out. That's a- astounding to me. Maybe it's a power move. Uh, maybe, maybe that makes sense. That's the what. That's what today's all about. Then today's it's all episode. About power it's all about power moves. It's all about power moves. <laughs> yeah, you know who made some real power moves? Matt so- Lauer. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's it's fucked up, but a button on the desk that's a power move. It's, uh, I mean, it's it's a tyrannical power move. But yeah, I mean, it's a power move like like having an oven that you cook Jews in is a power move. Um, yeah, it's fucked up, is what it is. Now, if he did it before, like f- like firing someone who had tried to fuck him over, it would have been cool. But he didn't. Yeah, he didn't. He locks the door and then he just you know yells at a guy. But to me, did. the only reason to have that would be to keep people out. If you have anybody in that office with you, this is already this is wrong. Like even if it's like I'm going to fire you and I'm going to lock the door so you can't get out. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah, I guess that is. Why do you want to be in there with the angry badger? Yeah, I like, guess that is questionable. Hmm. Yeah. Now, if you were like like you're fired and then I lock you in my office where you're going to just trash the place, I would assume. Yeah. That seems weird too. Yeah, no, man, I wasn't really thinking. Now, if he like stood at his office and was like, uh. Kyle, you're fired! Click! And then locks the door so Kyle can't get in. Okay. That's kind of power. <laughs> it would be cool if somebody <laughs> came in, he locked the door. In what situation is the button then, that locks your desk, locks your door? Like, and cool. then killed them because they were a spy. Sure. Yeah. Like a bad spy. Yeah. Matt Lauer. Like if he was like, I know you're a spy. And they're like, what? And they run away. And he goes, no. And he locks them in. And then they struggle to death and he kills them. Maybe he was just trying to be James <coughs> Bond, but got a little caught up in some of the rapier aspects of being James Bond. I think he ends up being more like a Bond villain. It's, yeah. He's more Blofeld than Bond at that point. So, it's like, you know, like, hello, Stephanie. I am the awesome of all your pain. <laughs> oh, no. And yeah. then he was. So he, Yeah, he truly was. Yeah. Gosh. Uh, so, uh, so fucked up. Like them three, right? Yeah. Uh, Condemned 2. Oh, uh, shit. There will be no Condemned Sorry. 3. Hey, yet. Here's, I mean, here's my issue with this, though. Just like 12 Rounds 3, they changed the format for the worse. Like, I would have been fine with the exact same movie in a different situation. Mm-hmm. Like On a different do, island. Do the movie and up the stakes. You know? Be like, and even have maybe, a, like, 
like have it be like turned out that the guy that was running the last one was actually an underling of this other guy, and he was the one who actually set it all up. Oh, it's and like a it's like a saw situation. Exactly, yeah. and he shows up and he's like, you know what his mistake was? Um, you know he he let them he didn't control the whole island. You know, or he was on the island, yeah. and you find out that he's now on. A boat. A boat, like, sh- like 50 miles offshore, and that's where he's running it all from. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that that would be fucking cool. And he's like, now they can't get to me. Yeah. And then Stone Cold builds some kind of, like, a raft with an outrigger on it. And, you know, out of, like, banana leaves or some shit. Yeah. And comes in like, I'm gonna come kick your ass! Um, <laughs> does it that way. No, so. Sto- Stone Cold takes a boat, like a little dinghy. Takes it under the water and breathes under it. Pirates of the Caribbean style. There you go. Walks fifty miles. There you go. You know, I, there's a lot wrong in that scene. There is. How I walked fifty miles underwater. Come in here, and kick your ass. <laughs> Austin <Awesome> three sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's funny. I've been watching. Uh, so I have WWE Network for two months for free. Mm-hmm. So and I I hadn't been checking stuff out. I've had it since the beginning of January. And then finally, I found a show on there that I'm dying to watch. And it's all about the Monday Night Wars. So during the '90s, there was actually two wrestling shows yeah. on Monday nights, and there was this, and there was this big war back and forth. And the WWE won because when WCW bought all their stars, Vince does what Vince does, and he just made more stars mm-hmm. because that's his real, yeah. you know. I mean, getting people to watch in the television deals, but he creates stars. Mm-hmm. He had already been creating stars besides those guys when you bought those guys. Yeah, he had already made Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. And Diesel and Razor Ramon. And they were like, oh shit. So they went and bought Diesel and Razor Ramon. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, fine, I'll make fucking more. And he went and did that. And he made Triple H. And he made, uh, and then he went and made Stone Cold Steve Austin. And he did all of that while the other guys were just getting old. Uh, And that's, you know, that's that's the brilliance of it all. So. Here's something I don't think we've considered. Yeah. The Condemned 3. We go back to Condemned 1 style. Okay. But they're all wrestlers. I am totally down with that. Right? I don't know why they weren't in the first fucking Right? Movie. What the fuck? That doesn't make sense. Like, at this point, yeah, you should absolutely do that. Yeah. Um, and maybe, I, I'm thinking at this point, the fact that Austin has stopped making these movies means that he feels he is too old and doesn't want to do that shit anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is fine. Um, so, if it's not him, get, like, ten other wrestlers. Yeah. You've got some fucking great ones. Uh, you know, you could have The Miz and Sheamus and... Uh, you know, a couple other guys. You could even have some of the luchadors mm-hmm. and have them just be wearing like surgical masks or something because you know, oh, it's like why is he wearing all that that gauze on his face? Oh, he was scarred in the blah blah blah. And so now, like, Sin Cara is in there just with like you know taping all over his face or some mm-hmm. shit like that. Um, or he plays himself. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is that was that your idea? Was it like yeah, we went and got. The no. world's greatest athletes. No, I just feel like a luchador wouldn't settle for less than his own mask. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he should play himself. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that would be badass. Yeah. Seamus would look fucking great in a movie like that. Mm-hmm. Seamus was in the uh, second Ninja Turtles movie as, uh, I believe, the rhinoceros. The new one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, he turns into the rhinoceros later. Okay. So, but yeah. Do uh, know the no. rhinoceros' name? Uh, Rocksteady? Yes. Yes. It's Bebop and Rocksteady. Yes. I'm, my my hesitation there was trying to remember which one was which. Ah, uh, me too. But I believe Bebop is the pig because uh, Boar starts with a B and Rocksteady starts with R, which is Rhinos. Oh, yeah, and Rhinos could, like, crush rocks with their hard skin. Yeah. So, well, no, no, I don't know about that, but it's... Like in a like in a I don't know why it's sense. Rocksteady, uh, but it's R for Rhino. Well, because Rhinos are hard. Yeah. Hard skin, hard nose. Yeah. Rhinos are cool. Honestly, the idea of, like, because, yeah, like, the idea of, like, making, you know, half people, half turtle is fucking bizarre uh, and holds no special, like, other than their shells. It's kind of grotesque. Yeah. There, and there's no, like, oh, you know why you do that so that blah, blah, blah. No, it makes no fucking sense at all. Mm-hmm. Turtles have no amazing advantage, you know, whereas if you're like, oh, I'm going to make a person that's a rhino. Oh, that person must be a fucking badass. Like, immediately that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Hey. So. I have a question. Yeah. Why do they wear the masks? The Ninja Turtles? Yeah. So that you can't, yeah, they can't because, protect their secret identities. So. Right? Like, they're like, somebody's like, oh, that was a giant turtle. Too bad he had a mask on. Yeah. I'll never be able so, to find him was again. That, was that Jeff? No, no, he was wearing a red mask. Ah, oh, fuck, we'll never know now. It's like, ah, uh, yeah. 
So no, it's it's funny too. And actually, the the colors of the masks uh, were invented for the TV show mm-hmm. because in the original comic books they were all black red. and white. They were, well, they were, but the masks were all red. Later, they were all red. Yeah. Yeah. So. Right, and then also blood was red. Yeah. It was like a dark. Comic. No, blood was black. Oh, it was. Blood was black. Oh, yeah. I mean, so. it was like a dark gritty. It was a dark green yeah. comic. Yeah. Like at one point, there's mermen. Um. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me uh let me just check something real quick. And we're back. Okay. Um. Sorry about that. Had to. The building we were in might not have been secure. I actually got in this morning and the door was open. Oh shit. Yeah. Have you uh done a check? Have you checked the rafters? Have you checked the vents? No. So there might be somebody hiding inside. It might um, be Bruce Willis. Yeah. Just be up there like, oh, come out to the coast, love a few laughs. <laughs> so, yeah. Although I don't know if there's any vents big enough for anybody to get into. Um, I mean, he's getting older. He's shrinking. Yeah. God, I'm trying to remember the last movie I saw him in. He does a lot of, like, direct-to-DVD yeah, he does. shit now. Yeah, he does. Um, which I'm guessing, because he, he just doesn't care anymore, and he just wants a paycheck. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. It's it's so depressing, too, because, I, I mean, obviously we're fans. I mean, that's what, that's what this whole podcast yeah. is about, is that we are huge Die Hard fans. And not just Die Hard. I'm a fan of a lot of his work. Yeah, I love Bruce Wells. Yeah. Um, yeah, some of my favorite movies of all time have had Bruce Willis in them. Over the Hedge? Over the Hedge was a good one, too. Over the Hedge is fucking great. Over the Hedge, and I think keeps getting me, I keep getting confused, because they made another movie called Nut Job, and yeah. it uses a lot of the same artwork Yeah, uh, for the squirrel, but the squirrel is now purple. Um, and totally so I, separate. I, yeah, I, and I, when I figured that out, I was about to see Nut Job, and then I was like, oh wait, that's not Over the Hedge, and I was like, mm-hmm. fuck that. Because Over the Hedge was Steve Carell... Bruce Willis was the raccoon, mm-hmm. um, and it was a fucking great movie. There's a lot of great, great voice cast. talent. Great cast. What's her? Uh, Wanda Sykes as the skunk. Yep. Uh, and then I think... Eugene Levy was the you. turtle. Yeah. Yep. Uh, really, just like all-star comedic cast. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I th- did they make it two? No. No. Yeah. Which they should have. I don't know why. Of all the like the animated little cartoon animal movies, like Madagascar has fucking three movies... And two spin-off movies. Yeah. And uh, a spin-off TV show. And a spin-off TV show. And a main TV show. I think there's, I think there's a, no, two spin-off TV shows. Really? Uh, yeah, the, the Penguins, Penguins got their own show. And then uh, the Lemur got his own show. Oh, King, you're right, King Julian. King Julian, yeah. King Julian! The Lemur. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, which, I, I will admit, that's one of the better parts of that whole... Oh, definitely. My daughter just did the play of Madagascar a little while ago. Mm-hmm. And the little girl who played King Julian stole the whole fucking show. Nice. She's like five years old, and she destroyed. Uh, yeah, I mean that. That's awesome. That little kid wrecked an entire theater, uh, and it's that theater by PV. Uh, oh yeah. Which, damn, that's a nice theater. Yeah, it is. So that theater was great. When I was in my uh, freshman drama class, mm-hmm. that theater had been built like two years before. It's like eighteen million dollars, something like that. Yeah, and my my drama teacher would be like, "Oh, they're they're always spending all this bullshit money on the football people. They get all this money." And I'm like, "Like while we're in the building, I'm like, dude, do you know like where we are? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, get some perspective. Like, yeah, that was a grass. I ate lunch on that grass. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that was a grass field for decades. Yeah, uh, yeah. There was like that was because uh, my church used to meet in. So I went to school there, but then my church used to meet in the main basketball gym. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, and that was where, like, we met in the mornings to, like, get everything ready. Yeah. And, like, you know, get all the chairs and stuff. <laughs> yeah. When you stretch for church. Yeah, yeah. of course. Uh, no, 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 but we'd get all the equipment and shit ready. Because I used to, um, I used to set the church up. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we, I mean, it's, there was a full-on lighting rig in there. There was, I mean, it was legit. That's awesome. Like, when you got in there for church, you had no idea that it was a basketball gym. Mm-hmm. Except for the fact that there were basketball courts near the ceiling. Uh, and, <laughs> and on the other half of the gym, you could hear squeaking cleats and, well, you know, people throwing. Ball, 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 Screen, screen, switch. And then the Lord saith unto John, hey, cover the light, cover the back. <laughs> Shoot the three, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, that was a cool church. I, I That was a time in my life that I missed. I was fairly... I was young. I was in like junior high, mm-hmm. so yeah. By the time I got to high school, we'd start our own church. So nice. That was all of that was like the funnest fucking time. That was a good time. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I got to be a youth pastor. I was a youth pastor for a year. 
um, and then it started really hurting my school. Uh, mm. So, like, yeah, halfway through junior year, um, I had gone from being a volunteer to full on taking it over. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I was preaching every Friday, and uh, I was leading worship, and it was it was fucking great. Mm-hmm. So I'm singing and I'm preaching, and we're doing it all. Like I was 16. Mm-hmm. There was no adult supervision. Adults were not allowed um, in, the in, in the youth church, specifically because we want this to be a safe place for the kids. Mm-hmm. We want the kids to be able to feel like they can talk without judgment. Mm-hmm. Um, and they can tell stories, and they can, like, if they need to tell on parents, if they need to, yeah, we want them to be 100% safe. Um, and so it's, you know, if, if there's something going on, if, there, if the leadership needs to address the adults, we'll let you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, and parent, a couple parents fucking hated that. Yeah. Because a lot of them, like, wanted to live vicariously through their kids. Yeah. So they were, like, showing up, like, you know, hey, let's all come to my house for a party afterwards. And it was like, yeah, I'm not here to do that. I'm here to mm-hmm. I'm here to be there for kids and to grow up. And, to, you know, we're all going to grow up together. We're all going to answer each other's questions. Yeah. Um, once a month, I'd have everybody split off, guys and girls. Uh, and one group would take the main auditorium. Another group would go out to the coffee shop out front, mm-hmm. and we would just have, like, this is powwow time. This is any embarrassing questions that you don't want to ask, and you didn't want to ask in front of the yeah, girls or your yeah. parents, anything. This is where you ask them. And, and that was where, honestly, some of the coolest shit we ever did in church mm-hmm. came out of that. Uh, yeah. It was really cool. And then later on when I stepped down and I just did a, uh, they, they were like, well, could you do a Bible study? I was like, yeah, I can do a Bible study. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I did a, I did that, and that was, um, like, everybody would meet in the building, and then we'd all split off, and the new youth pastors would take most of the guys, and then I had what I called hardcore guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was like, you know, this is hardcore Bible, Bible study. We're going to talk about the Bible, but we're also going to talk about, I mean, we're going to be real. We're going to talk about it all. If you want to mm-hmm. talk about porn, you want to talk about drugs, you want to talk about... Yeah. And it, like, this is where, if you want to talk about the real shit of it, the real life of it, mm-hmm. this is where we're going to do it. Um, and we can do that. But here's the thing. For the first couple of weeks, we're not going to do that. Uh, we're all just going to hang out. Yeah. Because uh, I want to, I, I specifically did that so that everybody would feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. So for the first couple of weeks, and plus, probably like once or twice a month, I would again, like if there wasn't anything going on, let's just have bro time. Mm-hmm. And I would throw everybody in my Jeep and another car, and we would drive down the street to what is now... Harbor Freight Tools, mm-hmm. uh, but at the time it was Ray's Video, and they had pizza in there. Nice. And we'd all sit around and eat pizza, have sodas, and you know watch a baseball game on TV. That's awesome. Uh, and I don't even like baseball, but yeah. it was bro time, and it was it was really really cool. And it's I remember like more and more guys were getting attached, like coming onto it, and like like holy shit, this is great. Yeah. Like this is like if I knew church was this, and I'm like exactly that's mm-hmm. this is what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be fellowship it's supposed to be friendship it's building community yeah no it's uh i've had a lot of ideas of church that have made me unpopular mm-hmm. <laughs> at certain churches because they're like hey you can't talk to them about that and it's like that's exactly what you should be talking yeah. to or like oh you don't want those kinds of people in your church those are exactly the kinds of people mm-hmm. you know what i don't need in my church the clean i have no problems everything's great and peachy keen yeah yippee uh, Okay, great. You go to regular church. You go in there yeah. and you do your little thing. But for those of us that are here, because part of it is that you're there to work on yourself and improve yourself and find your weaknesses and your and that stuff gets messy. Yeah. And so yeah, I was I was all for that. I fucking love that. That's awesome. Anyway, that's really weird cool. little tangent. Yeah. No, that's a really cool way to do it. Yeah. No, I, I it's and it's still. I think about getting back into it every now and then, and mm-hmm. I probably should getting back in the game. Uh, getting back in the ministry. Yeah. Uh, for the longest time, I haven't because uh, after I got married, uh, Jen, my wife, was reluctant to get into ministry because she kind of felt like if you're in that, you should be somebody who is like beyond reproach. Like you mm-hmm. should you should be like a pinnacle, shining example of goodness and grace. And mm-hmm. and at the time, we weren't. Yeah. Like before we were married, you know, we we had premarital sex. We had you know all these things that in the church. She was like, no, they'll judge us and they'll be... And I was like, yeah. see, but that's... We gotta move past this shit. We gotta... Yeah. You know, it's... Yeah. The the idea being that, like, oh, but I sinned this week, so I shouldn't go to church. That's exactly the reason to go... <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. That's, yeah. that's like saying, like, oh, I've been a little crazy this week, I shouldn't go see my psychiatrist. <laughs> so, or I've been sick, I shouldn't go to the doctor. Yeah. 
Uh, I don't like, want the doctor to see me sick. <laughs> oh, so, I feel terrible. I should stop taking my medicine. Yes. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Well, the idea that you would be shamed by the people that are there to support you and help you. Um, and my mom used to do it, too. My mom used to be like, oh, clean the house. The maid's coming over. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, what the fuck? What's she going to do when she gets here? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, if it's all clean. Yeah. All right. I don't know. Oh, and by the way, yeah, I was rich enough to have a maid as a kid. For a, for a minute. I didn't have a maid all the time, but I had a maid sometimes. Um, was it like, yeah. a, like a hot maid? No, no. It was like some middle-aged lady. Mm. She would come for like two hours a week. And it was mostly to do the deep cleaning shit that my mom didn't want to do. Yeah. Um, like toilets and crap. Um, so she'd come like for the like week. Like toilets and crap. Yeah. Well, you always shit on the floor. Um, <laughs> so. The toilet. Yeah. She actually didn't have to spend much time on the toilet. No. Yeah. It was just, yeah. it was mostly pee. So she could just hose it down and mm-hmm. she was good. But the piles of shit in the middle of the bathroom floor, uh, that was a problem. That was, that was get a glove problem. on. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I actually, fuck, I had to clean shit. Out of our hallway there, like last week. Oh, god damn it! I came in and I was like, "Oh my fucking god, somebody tracked shit in here." Um, and initially, I wanted to blame it on homeless people. Yeah. Because uh, you know, if you find shit in a place where shit shouldn't be, and it has access to the public world, mm-hmm. you assume homeless yeah. people. And also, you know, you're right next to the homeless. I am right also. next to the homeless, like central of of town. Yeah. Which is the park. Uh, yeah. I watched a drug deal happen there. <laughs> It was awesome. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah? What were they, I mean, did they just walk up and exchange money for, like, a pouch of shit? So, like, I'm filming for my uh, video production class. We're filming Chico, so we're, like, getting shots of, like, the fountain and shit. Yeah. And this dude walks, like, in front of our camera. He's like, oh, you filming? And we're like, uh, yeah. And he's like, yo, I'm a local rapper. This is my name. Yo, you want me to, like, spit for you? And we were like, No. <laughs> No, man, we're good. We just need to get some shots, and then we're going to go. And he's like, you sure? We're like, yeah. He's like, all right, well, you know, when I make it big, just know that I was here. You know, my name is blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he leaves. And we're like, that was fucking crazy. And that guy was Ghostface Killer. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, Jay-Z was here. Uh, but so then we're filming, and we're just, like, looking ahead. And one of my buddies goes, hey, look over there. And I look, and he's like, walks up to, like, this bench where this, like, person who looks homeless is standing and you see him like reach into his pocket pull something out like shake hands with them and then the other person like pulls something out of their pocket hand it to him he's like cool and then he like walks away oh my like, gosh it's a drug deal guys and then we turn <laughs> we turn around to film something on like the other side of us and then he stops sits in front of our camera and just starts smoking a joint and we're like cool, cool this dude. is back when it was not legal at all yeah yeah like if he did it today it'd be like all right good for you Somewhere that footage exists. Jeez. That's funny. Yeah. No, it's... Downtown has always been, like... Yeah, like, like, like very iffy on uh, marijuana enforcement. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know if he was buying the marijuana. Okay. He might have been buying something else. Gotcha. There's a lot of cocaine in Chico. Is there? Oh, yeah. See, oh. see, growing up for me, I knew about... I knew people were smoking weed. Uh, I didn't know anybody who was doing coke. Oh, yeah. Cocaine is prevalent. In our society, interesting. Yeah, I was now. Is that post two thousand when it got cheap? Probably, because yeah, that's like when I got up to Washington, I found out that Washington, uh, everybody's drug of choice in high school was coke. Yeah, and I was like, holy fuck! And they were like, well, it's cheaper than weed. And I was like, holy shit! <laughs> like I'm like in my mind, I'm still thinking of eighties coke, where it was like, oh, only the rich people had yeah. coke, and they had tons of it. That sounds like a way so, more exciting high school. Yeah, you know. Like everyone's always like, kind of seriously, the idea was like, hyper, like yeah. wow, all of you got your homework done and in record time. None of it makes any sense, but still, <laughs> like, like, yeah, we did, yeah, we did. Let's learn, let's learn. <laughs> like, your gums itchy? My gums are itchy. <laughs> Anybody else's face now? <laughs> <It's> like, <clears throat> all right, let's do this. Let's do this. This is my favorite class. It's this like, is great. This is fun. This is good. I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back. Mm. You guys want to run laps? Let's run laps. You guys want to run laps? Mm, let's do it. Okay. 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 <laughs> Jumping jacks. Let's all do jumping jacks. Um, yeah, it's uh, that's yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, a lot of I, cocaine in the. I had people. never seen cocaine until I got to Seattle, and I was actually I was actually a security guard, and uh, I was in <coughs> the building that, that I was guarding. Uh, it was a twenty five story building, and uh, there was a building. There was a, or an apartment that was empty on the twenty first floor, and there was a guy on the twenty first floor who was a big partier. Yeah, and he found out about the empty apartment. 
never a um, good thing. And for some reason, it wasn't locked. Yeah. So then people would just walk over there, open the door, and head right on in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then it became overflow. So then uh, if his parties got to be too many people, mm-hmm. which was every Friday and Saturday, yeah. um, he would all, they would all like start meandering over there. And uh, I get a noise complaint one night, and I go up there. And I go up to his apartment, and I'm like, I don't hear anything, but I hear shit across the hall. And I'm like, I go in there, and they're being fucking, and they're, it's not even music. They were just talking real fucking loud. Yeah. Uh, and laughing their asses off, and I told them to quiet down. And then I look at the table, and there is like a, it's a small Scarface mound. Yeah. It's not the it's full a, Scarface. It's a hill. It's, it's a tiny ant hill of, of coke. There's a mound of cocaine. Yeah, and I'm just like, holy shit. Almost as if they were like, hey, let's see what this looks like. Mm-hmm. And they just, because there's no reason to put it. In a pot. In a pile like that. As I understand it, you usually want it in lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they were just like, just like, hey, look. We just made a little Coke Mountain. Look at that. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it was it was bizarre. In all fairness, if you had the Coke to make one, you would. Maybe mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it was it was fucking nuts. I mean, uh, I saw a lot of shit. If you're those, doing yeah. Coke, it's got to be your dream to ultimately be able to like put your face in the mountain, Scarface down, just. <laughs> like, it's like that's it. What do you what do you dream about? I want to build my own Coke Mountain. Mm-hmm. And that's. Show, so I also, that was the first, and actually before I saw the coke, I watched people smoke crack for the first time. Nice. Uh, I was exposed to crack before I was exposed to coke. Uh, it, yeah, that, this is how it went. Alcohol, dad drank spare as a kid. Uh, weed, went to high school. Yeah. Um, more weed, college. Uh, bailed on college about a year in. <laughs> then went to Seattle, became a security guard, crack cocaine. <laughs> uh, and yeah, just full on, and I could tell you exactly how to do it. Mm-hmm. I, get, I mean, I've... They were like, you know what you should do is start keeping, like, glass tubes and, like, rubber stoppers and, like, uh, um, what is it, um, copper shavings back here. You just keep all that shit back here, man. That's what you should do. Cool. You can sell that crap and make money. And I was like, I don't want to do it. He's like, no, 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 it'd be legal. Like, it's just, it's just the stuff you need to do it. It's, you know, and then lighters. Yeah, you can have all that back here. And it's perfectly legal and you can sell that shit. And I was like... No. From what I've heard about your job, you were around a lot of crackheads. Yes. You could have made some good money selling yes. paraphernalia to them. This is true. You might have got Tommy Chong, though. Uh, Tommy Chong. He went to prison for oh, paraphernalia? selling... Paraphernalia? Yeah, paraphernalia. Not the drugs, but the... No, it was just paraphernalia. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I, I didn't want to get into fucking that shit. Uh, that was... You don't <clears> have <throat> the entrepreneurial spirit. Crack was weird, though, because... Crack never hit two people the exact same way. Yeah. Like, I like Coke, we can make fun of how Coke people are, because when they Coke up, most of them end up talking real fast, mm-hmm. getting excitable, Yeah, uh, you know, nose problems, going to the bathroom. It's You know the sweaty. hallmarks of a Coke head. Yeah. Crack, the only real hallmark we know is homeless and crack horse. <laughs> that, that I will lose my home, and I will probably suck a dick. To get more of it. Mm-hmm. That's really the only two things that are across the board happening to everybody. And it's fine because the crack will make me enjoy sucking the dick. It re- That's the other thing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So the crack whores, I, did, I found this out later, are not like, I'll suck your dick, then you give me crack. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. This is how it goes. We both smoke, then I suck your dick. Yeah. Uh, the reason because is that after I smoke the crack, I will enjoy whatever it is I do following that mm. uh and i will uh, and she will get off on just sucking a dick i mean it is a win-win you have to imagine his orgasm will probably be better too after smoking yeah coke. yeah so yeah it's i mean i saw some people i met some people that would hallucinate i met other people that would just be up for six days um Good Lord. Uh, yeah that was a weird one uh yeah i bump into this one girl and she's like i've been up for six days and i'm like why fuck and she's like i'm just not tired I'm just, and i'm like you're obviously tired what the yeah. fuck and she's like hey could i crash in there was an employee bathroom that was attached not to my main building but to like an offshoot of the building and i yeah. was like yeah sure go crash in there for a minute and i leave her in there and i come back two hours later i open the door she's butt naked on the floor on and not with like with the clothes underneath her she's on the linoleum floor uh. in the middle of the night butt naked and like flopping all over the place. And I was like, and I just shut the door. Yeah. I was like, I don't even fucking know. And plus, crackheads, none of them are hot. 
They're all gross. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, like ah, I shut the door. That's weird. And then she comes out like like two hours later, and she's like, "Hey, did somebody go in there?" And I was like, "I checked on you for a second, but I didn't actually go inside." And she's like, "No, no, I think somebody got in there." And I was like, "Ah, uh, they would have had to have a key to the bill. I mean, I no one else was in there." And she's like, "I'm pretty sure I got penetrated." And I'm like, "All right, this is fucking like fuck. You got to get is, out of there. Ben. This isn't. We're not doing. I'm never letting you in there again. I learned my lesson. Goddamn." Every time I try to be nice to you people, shit gets weird. <laughs> like, that was, uh The more you would try to, like, help, the worse it would fucking get. You gave a massive cookie, Ben. <clears throat> you know, you're, like, leaving the job site one day, and there was like, hey, I gotta be two blocks away real quick. Would you mind giving me a ride? And you're like, two blocks, it's on my way, sure. Mm-hmm. And I gave this one, it was a guy, I gave him a ride. He gets there, and he goes, all right, now wait here for five minutes. And I was like, wait, what, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> 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 he, and then he doesn't wait for me. He just hops out of the car, and I watch, and I'm like... Shit, he is making a drug deal. I'm a fucking accessory now. Son of a bitch. I'm about to be this guy's bag man. Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, this is not cool. Uh, and then he gets back in the car and he's like, he's like, all right, uh, now take me back to the other place. And I was like, I was like, uh, I'm just, I'm going to let you out here, man. This isn't cool. This isn't. And he's like, all right, all right, understood. Thanks for helping. And he leaves and I'm like, you don't have to thank me for helping. I didn't help. I didn't, I'm not as a part of this. I like how reasonable he is. Ugh, just. That's the hallmark of a good drug dealer. Like, nothing they ever did was normal. Like, they would seem like they were being normal. Every time you'd be like, wow, I've heard about crackheads, but you people seem so normal. Mm -hmm. And then they'd be like, eh, wait five minutes. (laughs) See? Like, Like, wait one second. I gotta go take a shit in that alley. (laughs) (laughs) Or, like, I'd meet this sweet, like, old granny lady, and she just looked homeless. And I was like, oh, I feel so bad for you. And she's like, yeah, I'm I'm Betty, and I'm homeless, and uh, please, please help me. And I was like, well, normally I'm supposed to kick you out of the alley. But as long as you promise not to make trouble and we can get you out of here by four, you can camp in the alley for a little bit. I don't want to kick you back out on the street. That's terrible. Mm-hmm. I come back later. She's blowing a guy in the fucking alley. I was like, what the fuck? You were such a sweet old lady. And it's uh, like you were the grandma. You told me about your grandkids. Oh, and now you're back. And then she's like, um, and, and like I came back later and I was like, Betty, what the fuck? Uh, you know, you told me you were just, you need a place to crash. She's yeah. like, well, yeah, but I got to make money. And I was like, I, I get that, but. I can't, come on, that's, <clears throat> so, every time I try to be nice, it would always blow up in my face. Yeah. It was, yeah, that job was crazy. Uh, but then the, the, then there's the funny parts where, like, I was cool with people peeing in the alley, but yeah. I had a problem with people shitting in the alley. That's fair. Uh, and, and, you know, this is Seattle. The pee will wash away. Yeah. It'll rain in five minutes and the pee will be gone. Mm-hmm. But that shit, if it's under an awning, that's staying. Uh, so I can't have that. And at one point, I was up in the parking lot. <laughs> and I hear from like the fourth floor up, I hear somebody in the alley like, Hey, what are you doing? And I look down and there's a guy that I normally talk to down there and he's like, You can't shit in this alley. This is Ben's alley. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like Right on. Dude. <laughs> it's like they're watching my back even when I'm not there. That's really cool. You had so you had cred. You had I had cred. cred. So yeah. Uh did I ever tell you about Shy? No. Okay, this is fucking amazing. Um I can't believe I haven't told the story. So I've been there about five months now, and this guy walks up, and he's he's dressed really fly. He's got all of his like cool. He looks like a rapper. He's got a nice like shiny jacket on. Uh, he's got like nice jeans, Timberlands, yeah. clean white shirt. He's got some chains, and he's got a big dude behind him, and he's got like the like this like like nice looking hooker girl. Yeah. Uh, and he walks up. The best kind of hooker girl. And he walks up, and he's like, he's like, hey man, what's up? I'm shy. I'm from Chicago, and I was like. Oh, I get it, yeah. And he's like, yeah. Uh, and he goes, you should have said, I'm also shy, I'm from Chico. <laughs> uh, and he's like, he's like, he's like, hey, I heard you, uh, you run this alley. And I'm like, well, I'm the, I'm the guard for the alley. So I'm, I'm paid to patrol it. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, okay, well, what's up? Uh, I, I hear you real cool. And I was like, okay. And he's like, he's like, so get this straight, boy. You and me, we're going to be best friends. And I'm like, uh, why, why is that? And he's like, because I'm going to watch out for you. I got your back, partner. And I'm like, all right. Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> it's like, I'm kind of just weirded out by it. He's like, no, he's like, no, 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 man. I got you. I got you. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you for getting me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's like, all right. And he gives me the bro hug. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, and then he's like, he's like, I'm going to be around later. And uh, I'm going I'm, to I'm take care of you real good. And I'm like, and I assume he means give me money for something. Uh, that I probably shouldn't be taking. Yeah. Um, but I'm broke, so cool. Uh, so he leaves, 
and I don't see him again that night. Mm -hmm. Three days later, he shows up at four in the morning. Uh, The jacket is gone. Mm -hmm. The big dude is gone. The whore is gone. His pants are gone. His shoes are gone. (laughs) The chains are gone. He is there in tidy whities and socks. Mm -hmm. And he is freezing his ass off. This is like November. Mm -hmm. And he walks up. He's like, and he's freezing. And he's like, he's like, hey, man. Hey, you remember me? And I was like, shy from Chicago, right? He's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, anyway, I could just get inside for a minute. And I'm like, no, man, no, I, I can't. Like, he wanted to be let into an apartment building. Yeah, no. <clears throat> I'm like, no. And he's like, how about just in the garage? And I'm like, no, no, this isn't, no, we're not going to do this. Mm-hmm. And he's like, he's like, all right, all right, I understand. You got to do what you got to do. Uh, hey, don't tell anybody you saw me. <laughs> and he turns around and runs away, like, holding his balls. <laughs> like, and Good running Lord. up the street. And I was like, what the fuck was that? God. Like, oh, my gosh. You could make, like, a trilogy of movies about what happened between you meeting Shy and him coming back. It's, it, well, and there's two more engagements. He comes up again two weeks later. Two weeks later, I'm walking the beat again. This time, it's about two in the morning. He shows up. He's dressed back in his clothes. Yeah. Uh, but still no chain, and the dude and the whore are gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he walks up, and I was like, hey, man, what happened? He goes, he's like, yeah, that was a bad night, man. It was a bad night. And I'm like, what? And he goes, ah, oh, just some shit. Just some shit. Like, he wouldn't tell me. Yeah. And I'm like, just say, I got the fuck beaten out of me, and somebody took all my money. And so, I let, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. So, I'm like, all right. So, he bounces and leaves. Uh, but you know, we agree to keep talking and hanging out. And then about a month later, mm-hmm. uh, I see him again. This time I'm back up in the parking garage. I'm like second or third floor. So people can see me though. Yeah. And I'm walking by and I, and he walks down the alley and he goes, Hey Ben. And he just yeah, he yells it from the end of the alley. Yeah. And I, and I poke my head out of the garage, like three stories up and I'm like, yeah, what's up? And he's like, he's like, Hey man, I just wanted to come by and tell you stuff's doing way better. I'm all cleaned up, and I was like, "It's like good, it's good." And he's like, "Yeah, man, that's I've been going through some." And as he's talking, a white van rolls up behind him. A door opens. Two guys grab him by the shoulders, and he's like, "Oh, what the fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> Pull him into the van, and then the van door shuts, and they drive the hell away. And I was like, "What the fuck just happened?" Jesus Christ! And so I'm down there like like an hour later, about about midnight every night. <clears throat> Or maybe a little after midnight, this guy Mike would show up. Mm-hmm. Mike was a uh, a deep sea fisherman um, uh, who didn't want to pay taxes. Yeah. So Mike would show up. Uh, he would go work up in Alaska, make hundreds of thousands of dollars doing mm-hmm. that, and then not want to give any of it to the government. Yeah. So instead of paying taxes, he would just like hitchhike and carry everything on his back, mm-hmm. and he would put it all in a bank, but in safe deposit boxes. Mm-hmm. So that you don't have to like pay tax, you don't have to report it. Yeah, of course. So, yeah. So, uh, so he, so he's out on the street and he's, you know, he's doing fine. He's not addicted to crack. He likes to drink and he likes to live on the streets and uh, he likes getting blowjobs from crack whores. Yeah. Um, and he's got a big stick that he uses to hit people when they come fuck with him. He knows uh, what he likes. He knows what he likes, and he sleeps in the corner on the other side of the alley where I am not in charge of patrolling. Yeah. Because I told him. That's not my building. This is my building. So the alley splits the block. I'm mm-hmm. this half of the block. That half of the block is some kind of advertising agency. Yeah. Not my business. And he goes, great. I'm sleeping over there. I was like, fine. So he's over there every night. And I come up this this one night. And he's getting his camp roll set up to sleep. I'm like, hey, Mike. Uh, you ever seen a van roll up? And before I even finish, he goes, oh, the jump vans? And I'm like, what the fuck? And he goes, yeah, no. It's the, it's the Seattle PD. Um, lately, they've been going around. And when they want to question guys... Uh, they, it's this special squad, uh, they're here to, they're like an anti-narcotic squad Yeah. and they roll around and if they think somebody's, you know, dealing, they'll just roll up, throw them in the back of the van and drive away and question them. Uh, and then, you know, later he gets let out or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, holy fuck. And he goes, yeah. Why'd you see one? And I was like, do you know shy? And he's like, that motherfucker. <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like what? And he goes, he goes, that guy's such a fucking blowhard. And I'm like. Okay, I noticed that also. He goes, why, did he get grabbed? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, oh, he's fucked. And I was like, what? And he goes, oh, yeah, he was, like, he showed up and he was dealing big for, like, two weeks. And then a bunch of shit went down. And then, yeah, no, he's he's been hurting, but he's still dealing. And they know it. And, mm-hmm. yeah, he's fucking going to jail. And I was Jesus. like, wow, never saw Shy again. 
Uh, that was uh, last time I saw him. Fucking crazy. Uh, yeah, that was <laughs> such a weird fucking job. Uh, and I only did it for like nine months. Yeah, and Jesus. I and I guarded. I guarded about four or five other different properties, mm-hmm. but the only time anything really crazy happened was on that property. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, and it's it happened from the first fucking night. Mm-hmm. First night I was there, uh, my supervisor's walking me around, showing me the beat, and we we go inside the building and we check the log, and he goes, and this is where you'll write the log, and uh, <laughs> and if if you don't write the log, we will take you to task. See Robert Frost, <laughs> pretty much, uh, and he's doing all this, and I'm like, all right, so I'm learning the log, and then he takes me out back, and we go to the dumpster, and he goes, you should check this area, there might be vagrants about, and and I'm like, yes, sure, I'll check the area. Um, and then as we're checking, I'm standing by a dumpster and a hand reaches out and grabs my ankle Fuck from that. underneath the dumpster. And I was like, Oh shit. And I jumped back and this guy comes out. And he's like, Hey, sorry, man. I thought you were somebody else. And I was like, you thought I was another 300 pound man in a cop uniform <laughs> with an old cop man next to me. You thought I was a different one of those. Yeah. Uh, and, and my boss was like, you climb out of there, son. And the, the poor guy climbs out, uh, and he's like, sorry, fellas, I'll be moving along now. And he's like, you do that. And then we go back inside, and we mark it on the log. Uh, yeah, it was just, it was fucking bizarre. The whole thing was crazy. It's That's a really crazy, crazy gig. So, one second here, we're just going to take a quick break. All right. So, that was exciting. We just, uh, we had a quick break because the police were here. <laughs> <laughs> right, and as we were telling all of our security guard stories about homeless people... Uh, our building got tagged uh, by a graffiti artist, uh, so we had to go out and talk to the police and let them, you know, get. They got my name and I, they asked for my driver's license number. I thought that was yeah weird. Like in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh shit, do I have tickets? Uh, that made but, me, that made me nervous because I was like, if they asked for mine. I just found out yesterday that it's expired. Which, by the way, mom, I'm gonna call you about that. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you calling your mom? Why don't you just take care of it? That's a good point. Yeah. Well. You're a grown man. Yeah. That's true. At least she's, you're supposed to be. She's going to find out when this comes out. There you go. Uh, I, uh, at one point, I was driving with a suspended license for well over a year. Nice. Um, which I don't recommend doing. I got a ticket uh, during that time, a speeding ticket. Mm-hmm. I was doing, I was doing over a hundred uh, mm-hmm. in a 70 mile an hour zone. They actually, the one, so that's what they got me on radar doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, When the officer pulled up behind me, I was only doing 90. Yeah. So I got pinged for that. He pulled me over, found out my license was expired. I had to get out of the car. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily Jen was there and she was able to drive the car. So I got the ticket. Um, Turns out this is why I wasn't able to renew my license though. Because later I went to renew my license. If you have an outstanding warrant for your arrest, you cannot... The DMV can't help you. Oh, shit. Uh, they also, though, didn't tell me that there was an outstanding warrant. So then later when I went to court, they were mm-hmm. like, have you renewed your license yet? I was like, they wouldn't let me. And it was like, oh, it's probably because you have an outstanding warrant. And I was like, oh, no, they told me it's because I had to pay my registration for my car. And they mm-hmm. were, and he's like, that's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I'm a fucking kid. Yeah. So, yeah. That's crazy. So, uh, long story short, that 20 mile an hour over the speeding limit ticket, how much do you think that cost? God, when was this? Uh, 2002? I'm going to say 150 $10. Because, fuck? so when I got to the judge, uh, he ended up um, crossing out the speeding ticket part and just dinging me for driving with an expired license. Mm. Uh, and I went to the uh, place in Orland, because that's where the court was to do this. Mm. Uh, I had to go to Orland and went to their um, went to their DMV, got my license renewed, Yeah, because the judge pulled my... Uh, warrant uh, so that I could be nice. you know handled went and got my license renewed got back like within an hour and a half and uh, my dad was there because I was expecting to have to drop like 250 bucks yeah like I, I asked my dad I was like I don't know how much do you think it'll be and he goes for 20 miles over and I was like yeah and he goes yeah 200 300 bucks like mm-hmm. that and I was like oh shit so I brought him with me because you know he's got money yeah uh, and and I was in my early 20s uh, so yeah it's Jesus yeah I ha- I've had I got a ticket. It's best not to fuck with the law. No. I, he pulled me over. I was doing 85 and a 65. Uh, I was doing 110, but he didn't catch me doing that. Yeah. Um, love you, Mom. <laughs> um, Stories of your jailbird son. Right. 
Uh, and so he comes over, and I'm really nice and respectful to him because you know I, I know like that's if you treat cops well, he's they treat you fuck well. With you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he ends up, he's like, "Can I have your license and registration?" And I give it to him, and he's like, "No, you got different addresses on here." And I was like, "Oh yeah, we moved." And he's like, "All right, well, I'm just gonna give you a fix it ticket. It's like 25 bucks. Just fix your uh, your address." And I was like, "Cool, sir. Thank Isn't it you. great being white? It's, um. It is awesome." <laughs> Serious. And at any point, yeah. were you in danger of being shot? Probably not. Yeah. Probably not, no. No, yeah. Um, although I gotta say, he, I was freaked out. He let out. me shoot his gun. <laughs> we went around the corner and shot some people. It yeah. was great. Uh, no, so right out there when we were talking to the cop, mm-hmm. he had his gun, on, he had his you know sidearm, which I understand they're cops, they need to have mm-hmm. those, um, but he didn't have a clip on it, like he didn't have like oh. a safety strap, and I was like, that feels really not, and it's not like he's wearing a jacket and it's under... Like, he's yeah. wearing a vest. You yeah. can clearly see it on his hip. Um, yeah. I thought that was... I don't know. Question. I'm, I'm really weirded out. I don't like being around guns. I was in my dad's office. I was working for a while, and I went in. One of his patients is a detective. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's, you know, he, like, he, when you go to adjust him, he stands up, takes his gun, and puts it on a little shelf. Yeah. Uh, where normally people put their keys in their wallet and shit yeah. like that. Oh. But I'm, But I'm like... Oh, fuck, there's a gun in the room. Oh, damn it. Like, it's, I just don't want to... You don't like guns? Because it's like, a second ago, the possibility of me being shot in this room was 0%. <laughs> and now, it's point zero 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 one percent But that increase bothers the fuck out of me. Yeah. Um, just because it's on the table now. Mm-hmm. I could get shot. <laughs> so it's... I don't know. I don't like it. No, that's fair. Uh, Alright, so we should probably get back to talking about the fucking movie. Um, so this movie was a turd, yeah. boring and not fun, Yeah, which I think is clearly in the fact that we've talked about everything but the movie, because fuck, this movie was boring. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's, yeah, Randy Orton had some good bits here and there. He had some good bits here and there, but honestly, just nothing, yeah. like, I feel like even Dean Cain had a more memorable performance. Dean Cain? Dean Cain? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, even Big Show did better in Vendetta. Oh, man. Uh, Yeah. Gosh, just, just just some bad. Yeah, it's just I think it's Vendetta, a nothing of a movie. Was Vendetta the one I liked? Might have been. Might have been. Um, yeah. Gosh, I don't know. But yeah, no, it's uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to Marine Five. I feel like the Marine movies, Marine Five Battlegrounds, Battlegrounds. Uh, I feel like the Marine movies are less of a miss, and I think it's cool that it's the only movie where they've actually kept a storyline going because this is now the third movie in a row with the same character, more or less. I mean. There's nothing really carrying over. It's just him in no. different situations. But him, it's him yeah. in his life. We're watching the same character do th- three different things. Yeah. Which is more than I can say for any of the other sequels, which are really not fucking sequels. In, in all fairness, though, <laughs> the Marine only started doing this at the third movie. Yeah. You know. No. Up until then, which I kind of liked that idea, too, though, that it's like... Different Marines. So it's just different Marines doing amazing fucking things. Oh, we should get Kylo it's a Ren in brilliant there. idea. Kylo Ren Adam Driver, he was a Marine. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. You could totally do a movie like that. And he's yoked. Yeah. As we all learned from as The we Last all learned Jedi. Last Jedi, yeah. Which, you know, if you were watching Girls, you already knew that he was yoked. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. Who was watching Girls? I was. I watched all Actually, five people seasons. Watch Girls. Yeah. It's pretty popular. Uh, it's, it's a perplexing show. Like, I, it had moments of greatness and moments of, why the fuck am I still watching this show? Yeah. So. I never really got into it. There was there was times where I really you were just pushing through, mm-hmm. uh, and especially in the last season, it was just like let me just let's just finish it. Let's just yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, I just watched season one of Handmaid's Tale. Don't know if you've seen that. Mm. Holy fuck, go watch that show. Yeah, that's what any I shows about alternate reality America mm-hmm. fascinate the hell out of me. Man in the High Castle. Uh, Man in the High Castle started to fascinate the hell out of me. Uh, yeah, and then but the part of it that I wanted, which was explain it, explain how it happened, yeah. explain why. They ignored that. <laughs> they were like, "No, no, no. Let's just let's just jump to this story." And you're like, "But this story is not super yeah. interesting. It's okay, but it's not." Meanwhile, Handmaid's Tale, they sprinkle in this story, but they also go and tell you about how we got here, mm-hmm. and it's fascinating. That's all. Have, you, uh, have yeah. you played the new Wolfenstein games? No. So starting the third of the new ones just came out. Starting at the first one, I think it was the New Order. They they like rebooted Wolfenstein. Um, you know, brought it into the modern era. Yeah. Even though there were already modern games. But uh, nobody played them. And it's uh, an alternate reality where the Nazis won World War Two, 
like the main guy from Wolfenstein, which you're still playing as BJ Blazkowicz. Yeah. Uh, he got like fucked up in a fight in 1946. Uh, okay. So we've already split. He got like fucked up and was like brain dead for like 20 years in a hospital. So they kept an American. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And then he comes back and he's in, you know, the Nazis ruled the world. And he's in like Nazi ruled Poland and he's fighting with the resistance. And then I think in the newest one, he goes to America. That's awesome. Yeah, it's cool. They, they're good games. They get Those games have, like, really fucking good characters and story in them, too. Okay. Yeah. Also, I've, Jimi I've... Hendrix is there. Nice. Yeah. Um, I've played, I think, Missions or something. Like, I've played Demos. Yeah. Uh, and they are fucking great. Yeah, no, it's, um, a, it's a tight game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Plus, the graphics are just insane. And it's um, still the same, like... As it as the or Castle Wolfenstein was, I'm still picking yeah. up health and ammo or health and armor and yep. dual wield weapons and yeah yeah it's uh, cool it's yeah tight. no those games are awesome so um I'm actually uh, I finally stopped playing Assassin's Creed Origins for a minute mm-hmm. uh, just because I've been so into wrestling lately so I went and popped in WWE 2K18 mm-hmm. and went to play career mode and I'm super bummed I have hit Royal Rumble which. Last year's game in career mode, you could never play in the Royal Rumble, which was a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like, I went years and never got into the Royal Rumble, and I was like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. So this one, they put you in it, and uh, you have to play from the first position. So I don't know if you know Royal Rumble. It's a battle royale, which means that um, the only way to beat your opponent is to throw him over the top rope, and he lands his feet on the bottom. Now, there's 30 guys in it, though. Yeah. You start with two, and every two minutes, another guy comes out. That's awesome. So at some points... There's like 12 guys in the ring. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you you start the thing at number one, and you're in there with another guy, and there's going to be 28 other guys. So yeah, and you have to and win. You have to win. Fuck that. And if you don't win, you're like, oh, well, I didn't win. I'll just take my lumps and move on. Nope. And you're like, well, shit. And, and you're only, this is your first year. Yeah. And your guy isn't really good enough yet mm-hmm. to outlast this. And so I finally figured out how I think you're supposed to do it. I get in there and immediately I grab, I, I give the guy a quick punch in the mouth mm-hmm. and I immediately try to throw him over the top rope. Yeah. Instead of like, well, let's work him down a little bit. And then yeah. when I weakened him, I'll just fling him. And instead of resisting, he'll just fly right over. Yeah. Uh, no. So I, I immediately, heart, like heavy I, aggressive. he walks right up. I give him a quick kick to the gut, grab him by the back of the head and hurl him over the top rope. Yeah. He grabs the rope and then I, I get one of two things. One, he either flips head over heels, holding onto the rope. And then he will do a move that is called Skin the Cat, mm-hmm. where he does a pull-up and pulls his legs all the way up and comes back over. Yeah. Or he flips over and is on his feet and will just climb under. Yeah. If, if it's that, i got to punch him in the head like four <laughs> times real quick before he gets in. Like, he's yeah. trying to get in, and, and I'm, just... I'm punching the shit out of him. <laughs> and uh, if I mistime it, he'll get in. Uh, so, yeah. So, if I get those, he'll fall down. Yeah. Or if he does the, if he does the flip-over thing, it's super easy. I wait until he's all the way over. And then my character runs up and gives him a knee to the back of the head. Yeah. And he falls out. And I get him almost every time. The punch one, I have to nail four hits in a row. And he could block any one of those hits. Mm. And once that happens, he's back in. Yeah. That's so, cool. I got 20 guys. I did 20 guys in a row like that without ever letting a third guy get in the ring. Yeah. So, this is every two minutes, I am ejecting one of these guys. Yeah. <laughs> like, Jesus. he walks. They walk in and like, here's the new guy. Oh, he's kicked. Oh, he's over the. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's out. He's out already. Holy yeah. shit. And the guys are like joking about how fast I'm going through these guys. Mm-hmm. And then we hit number 20 and fucking, you know, the music hits. Boom. Boom. Ha, ha, ha. Ba, ba, it's John Cena's music. And I'm God like, fuck. It. And so I, and I, I run in. I give him a kick to the gut. I throw him over. And I go to punch him. He blocks my punch. Fuck. And then he gets in, and I block a move from his, and I go, uh, quickly, because I've still got, like, seconds now to get him yeah. over. The countdown has started for the next guy. I got ten seconds. Yeah. I go to throw him over again. He, he again blocks me, like, on the second or third punch, and I'm like, fuck. And then by that time, the second guy gets in, and the game will immediately point guy number three, mm-hmm. so you, Cena, and this guy, they are now, it's now two on one. Oh, Instead fuck. of being like, oh, maybe he'll pick Cena, and I'll get a breather. Yeah. No. He goes right after you. Shit. And so then as soon as you're near the ropes, they go to grab you. And as soon as they grab you, they ho- one of them hoists you up on his shoulder to push you over the top. Mm-hmm. And then the other guy comes over and helps him. And when there's two guys doing it, you're fucked. Fuck that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that fucking sucks. And I have played that thing 20 times, 30 times at this point. That's yeah. That version is the farthest I've ever gotten. Because I ended up getting ejected like number with 
uh, 24 guys in. There were still six guys to go. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, I usually get eliminated around 14, 15. Because uh, I can usually, like, I've tried, so then I was like, all right, but at least I know how to do it. Yeah. So then I go to do it on the next time. Now the third guy in blocks my punch, and now mm-hmm. I'm, and now it starts filling up. Yeah. And by the time we're on guy number 12, there's six guys in the ring. They all and, come at you. And, the, and not all of them, but at least one or two of them. And as soon as there's an odd number, I get double teamed. Yeah. Which uh, is like shit. Uh, if there's an even number, everybody will pair off and find somebody to beat up. Yeah. But yeah. And then as soon as somebody hoists me up, it's almost like the other guys will be like, oh, he's almost out. Let's all go get him. Mm-hmm. And they all fucking run over and jump me. And it's like, God damn it. Yeah. So it's impossible. I feel like I'm stuck. I have no way of getting out of there. So anyway, uh, so that is the end of Die Hard on a Blank. Uh, Trevor just got here for our next podcast. Uh, not Trevor. Excuse me, Velma. That's so fucking hard. I am really working on that. So, anyway. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, good night, motherfuckers. Good night. This, this is a quick wrap-up. It is a like, quick wrap-up. We didn't give the email or anything. I mean, we we went on the crack stories for a long time. This is true. Which was great. I loved it. Yeah. So don't make it It was way more... So, well, I also... I have other shit to do. So oh, yeah. I, need to, I need to get going. Oh, so. look at you. Yeah. And also the Condemned 3 suck. Condemned 2. There is no Condemned 3. I keep saying that. <laughs> you keep saying that. Yeah. yeah. Condemned 3 is that idea we had where it's, it's on a boat. So, anyway. It's on an island, then on a boat. It's on an island, and, and on the, the bad island, guy's on a boat. And, and on, the island. on the island, it's all wrestlers. Yeah. And they all get to choreograph the fights. Yes. So. All right. Well, good night, motherfuckers. Thank you guys for listening. And uh, we'll be back next week with finally the end of the WWE films. What? Marine 5. So. Night, motherfuckers. Marine 5 night. Battlegrounds. Battlegrounds. Thank you. That is its title. check sound check i mean you gotta tell somebody i, I don't know I, was, I thought i was trying to be polite like i was like oh this will be good i'll tell him i have his towel and he'll say thank you and then i didn't think about like oh that's right he would want the towel back and then i'll have to explain that it's a fuck towel and it's used to clean up my cum uh so yeah, yeah but it would be funny if <laughs> you didn't tell him i didn't tell him. and then he's just and then i see him one day just like dabbing it on his face and his i'm face like, with your like oh you got my cum on your face no that's when you no matter laugh. how much you've washed it <laughs> You just so. laugh. You don't tell them you laugh. Oh, no, you tell them. That's... Oh. No, you tell them years down the line. Yeah. You want them to have used this towel for their own fucking. Because then it reminds me of that Bob Saget story where, like, uh, they had a picture of Dave Coulier, mm-hmm. and uh, Stamos put his dick through it. Uh, like, they cut out the mouth yeah. of Coulier. Stamos put his dick through it, and he was like, Oh, look, I'm Dave Coulier! Does it have any wood? <laughs> <laughs> He's like... This is the woodchuck voice. Yeah. And then they were all laughing, and then they took the picture and they just put it in a pile. Later that night, Coulier gets in the car, and he's like, hey, look, who's this guy? And he holds it up to his face and sticks his tongue <laughs> through the hole. And he goes, la, 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 la. And they were like, ah, you just sucked Jesse's dick. <laughs> so, it's like, yeah, that's, uh. I like that in, in your interpretation of events. Uh, they call him Jesse. And yeah. not John Stamos. No. So, yeah. Hey, Dave. <laughs> it's me, Bob Saget. Hey. Me and Jesse Katsopoulos are hanging out tonight. You in? Like, hey, cut it out. <laughs> yeah. <God. laughs>